And in the arena, we've got Crash and Burn over on the red side. And on the blue side, we've got Boris batting off. Burn is blue, Crash is orange. Speaking of... Yep. Oh, that was some very bright... Do it again, do it again. Well, Crash works, no doubt about that. Burn, however, does not work, apparently. They're the looks like, Yeah, it looks to me like Dane wants to give both of the old nip and tuck, those little nippers on there. Well, they both locked in, so let's start this up in three, two, one, fight. All right, Boris Badenoff. It's a nice flip in on... Immediately putting Crash on its head. Wait, Crash doesn't have a base plate? Well, Crash has, like, half a base plate, apparently. Well, what? There's nothing going to pop up out of the floor here at RoboGains. There's no need to put a base plate on your robots. Yeah, we don't have pistons or Hellraisers, but that said, it looks to me like... Uh... Now Burn is upside down. Yeah, Burn's upside down, and Crash has managed to flip itself up, right? I'm surprised Boris Madenoff is not going for just a grab. I think it should be able to snare one or more of these two. Yeah, the pincers are not designed to... Oh, there we go with the flamethrower. There's Crash. Yeah, and it looks to me like Crash's flamethrower is working better in this atmosphere than Tastes Like Burning's was earlier. It's roasting the underbelly of Boris Bednov. Boris Bednov's wheels are off the ground, so... It... Wait a minute, is the... Please tell me, is the flamethrower actually doing damage? Well, there was a little bit of smoke, but uh, it's ended now. And now Crash can't stop activating the flamethrower. Oh, my gosh. Oh, yeah, and you hear that little click. The igniter that they're using for a flamethrower is a stun gun. As there we go. It's bursting against the front wedge of Boris Badenov. Yeah, it's, it's trapped inside the forks of Boris Badenov, but it's going to respond with the flamethrower as Boris Badenov pushes and Crash is pushing back. Crash shoving. was stranded on the wall right there. Wall almost claimed another victim, and Boris Badenov's about to take advantage there. Well, when Crash shoved Boris Badenov into the wall, it well, briefly uh, moved the pincers inward, but now the pincers are surrounding uh, Crash. Some sparks coming off that flamethrower. Crash and Burn knocking into each other with a fervor as Crash pins. Hey. Oh, finally Burn's weapon. Finally Burn actually works. It only took forever. Burn the floor. Oh, Burn almost getting right side up and drove itself back onto its head. Very close. These two giant ant one looking machines. Burn is trying frantically and another quick little burst from Burn. Well, I don't know if much damage is being done, but it's certainly an entertaining fight to watch. Indeed, indeed. I see something dangling over on the side of Boris Badenov. Something sticking out there. See the wire up there? I do. I, I think Boris Badenov was missing some pieces on his top plate. That's not good. Well, both halves of the multi-body continue to chase after Boris Badenov. Boris Badenov not quite sure what to attack here. Yeah, well, if they can get some double flamethrowing action in, then I see smoke coming Wow. Out. That is not good, and it looks like it's coming out of uh, both sides now. No, that's just the gas there as Burn finally lights up. It only took forever. Well, with 10 seconds left on the clock, it looks like Boris needs Natasha to come in to help him. Yeah, Natasha's not going to be able to save him at this point as this fight widens down. Here at two, one, this match is over. And there's some more smoke coming out of Boris Badenov there at the end. The judge's decision is in, and your winner by a score of 19 to 14, Crash and Burn. Well, let's hear uh, how Boris Badenov took that fight. Very strange. I'm used to going up against Maltese, but with a giant angry spinning bar of death, doing it with just a wedge and some pincers, it's uh, felt like I was at a little bit of an advantage, especially those two. They're fantastic drivers. Well, got flamethrowers on me. Two Canadians with a flamethrower against a cartoon character. That's a B-movie. Oh. Absolutely a B-movie. Straight out of Rocky and Bullwinkle. So, uh, you were smoking a little bit at the end. Do you think you took a lot of uh, fire damage? Oh, he just set the lube on our chains on fire. That's all. Okay, fantastic. We can run them dry. Awesome. Well, good driving this week. Thank you very much. It was a really wonderful fight. You guys came out victorious. What were you thinking as you were going in? 
Jiu-Jitsu, we're hoping to outlast an opponent with a weapon, and, and that wasn't going to break. So, I mean, we had to come up with something. Luckily, our fire was working, and I think that maybe gained us a few points. So, I don't. it must have been a close match, though, because we didn't know either way. The driving, how was that driving together and making sure the fire, you got him in the corner? That went good. Uh, the one thing that we never practiced at all was being upside down. We got us both upside down for a bit there, so that was some adjustment, but uh, we're pretty good. I think we had some teamwork there holding this corner, and, and that's what we were trying to do, so I'm pleased with that. And you're moving on up, so... <laughs> Next is Megabyte. Megabyte's going to be tough, so any strategy? We'll put on the, the horizontal wedge and see what we can do.